Gee, music man, why the long face? Oh, hi, Professor. Nice to have you here. Well, you know, I was just listening to my favorite music, marches. And you know, well, it seems like people just never listen to marches anymore. I mean, just think, marches have been around since Roman times. Why, just think. You know, marches started originally with only drums because they needed loud music to move the troops from this hill to that hill efficiently. They found out that when the troops moved together to a steady beat, they could get to their destinations much quicker. Later, they added trumpets and fifes to the marches, and troops could march all day. They loved the stirring melodies, and it bolstered their patriotism and courage. You know, you're right, music man. William Shakespeare expressed our fascination with martial music in his great play, Othello. Farewell, the neighing steed, the shrill trump, the ear-piercing fight, the royal banner in all quality, pride, pomp, and circumstance of glorious war. But still, it seems like people have forgotten how great marches are, what they have meant to us as a nation and as a people. There are marches for every occasion, from cradle to grave. Why, what would a coronation be without a march? And how about a circus or a victory parade? Well, music man, there hasn't been a coronation here in a lot of years. Circuses, well, PETA and an irrational fear of clowns have made circuses a tough sell. And victory, well... But, but the greatness of the march we have still lingers. Think back to our heritage. After the Civil War, the band expanded its role beyond the military function and was the most popular means for entertainment for the new middle class. Marches remained a part of the municipal and professional band repertoire. And because they were so popular, people used marches to dance to for civic occasions like, like, like bridge dedications. And then they just became part of the fabric of the American culture. Wedding marches. Funeral marches, tributes to great things like newspapers, and other great things for our lives. But of course you're right. But why don't people listen to marches anymore? I don't know. Probably some conspiracy started by the French horn section. Do you really think so? No, I think people really do like marches. But the bands these days, they're too highfalutin, too sophisticated, too elite to soil their hands with the march. Bands just don't play marches anymore, because if they did, people would jump on the bandwagon, tap their feet, and let the music take them away from their modern technology. That's right. Why, if I ever want to tweet, I take out my piccolo and play the obligato line to the stars and stripes forever. Music man, music man, there's something desperately wrong here. I was listening to Semper Fidelis, and I think Mr. Souza screwed up. Well, Professor, what's wrong? There's no dogfight. Perhaps it's in a dusty archive somewhere. <laughs> no, Professor. Why, you have just experienced a variation on the march form. A march without a dogfight, you know. One that has two themes in the trio? Well, that kind of march is called a regimental march, and it's used often on the parade route. Sousa wrote several of these, including El Capitan, Manhattan Beach, High School Cadets, and Semper Fidelis. Oh, yes, of course. But let's take a look at how the March King, John, John Philip Sousa, single-handedly standardized the American march form. The introduction of the march, usually four measures long, sets the stage for what's to come. A first strain follows, usually played more softly. After the first strain repeats, the second strain demonstrates a new idea, usually with a new dynamic from the first. It usually repeats as well, and sometimes a counter melody is added to increase the listener's interest. It is customary in the trio to change keys. The dynamics change and the character of the melody changes to become smoother and more legato. 
Usually the trio repeats, and this can serve as the conclusion of the march. But in many marches, we have another common feature called the break strain or dogfight. This is sandwiched between strains of the trio and features the most harmonically tense, most unstable chords. When it resolves back to the familiar trio strain, the tension is relieved. And the march concludes off times with a traditional stinger. Well, it seems to me that the march features something for everyone. There is comfort in predictable form, yet in the hands of a clever composer, there are infinite opportunities for variations in melody, harmony, counter melody, and rhythmic drive. That's right, music man. Let's all strive to consider the march's rich and interesting history. Why, there's a march for every occasion and for every taste. Maybe you will be lucky enough to witness the glory, the honor, the legacy of... The, the March! march.